So now let's talk about connecting your Lambda to a VPC. Now a VPC is a network that has certain resources that you own within it. So a VPC is basically a network that is exclusively owned by you. And all the resources within it are also basically something that you own. Now a Lambda is in a environment or in a network that is owned by AWS itself and you have absolutely no control over the environment there. Now to connect your Lambda to your VPC, you have to make a few changes to your settings. So in this particular section, we'll talk about how you can connect your Lambda to an EC2 machine via the private IP address of the EC2 machine. So let's see how we can do this. So the first thing that I have done is I have created an EC2 machine and this EC2 machine is basically a very simple T2 micro and it's in the default network. So the first thing I'll do is I'll open this particular EC2 machine. So to do that, I can just click on connect and I will just connect using the EC2 instance connect. I will just click on connect here. So once I'm connected to the machine, what I need to do is I need to run a node application. So that's precisely what I have done. I have created a app.js and this app.js uses the express framework to return a API back to the user. So let me show you the application. So it's a very simple application. It just returns a hello world back to the user. So if I run this particular IP address, you can see that it returns a hello world. So currently I'm using the public IP address to access this particular endpoint. So we have our EC2 machine and we have a API running on this. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a Lambda function so that we are able to connect to this particular IP address. We'll do it first using the public IP address and then we'll do it using the private IP address. So let's start by creating a Lambda. So I'm in my functions right now. I click on create function. Again, it's going to be author from scratch. I just call this as my VPC network. I'll click on create. And here what I'll do is I'll update my piece of code use in the console itself. So what I'll do is I'll just call the Axios library and this Axios library makes it simple for me to do a get request. So what I need to do is I just need to do a get request on this particular IP address. So this is the private IP. Let me just copy this public IP from here and I'll paste it here. So all that this particular function will do is it will just get the data from this particular IP address. It's running on port 3000 and then the response it will just return it back to me. So let's deploy this function and let's see what happens. This particular code I will give in the description below. And if you have any issues with this particular code, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me and I'll gladly help you out. So let's test this particular application. Okay, let's create an event. I'll click on create now and let's test this application. Okay, I need to add the layer as well. So I will click on layers here, add a layer, custom layer, Axios. And let's run it again. And you can see that it returns a hello world back to me. So the next thing that I'll do is, okay, I know that this particular IP works and let's try to access it just using the private IP of this particular instance. So I go back to my VPC again. I'll click on the instance. So here we get the private IP of this particular instance. So I will just copy this private IP address and I will paste it over here. And let's deploy this. Now, at this moment in time, my function here is not connected to the VPC. So this thing should fail. So let's click on test again. And you can see that it timed out. That's, so that is because my function here does not have any access to the VPC. So let's give this particular function access to the VPC. So I will go to my configuration again. And I will click on the VPC here. I'll click on edit. 
And here I need to choose the VPC. So I only have one default VPC. So it's within this default VPC that my virtual machine resides. So I will have to give an access to a particular subnet. So you can have the option of giving access to all the subnets. That's precisely what I'll give. I will give access to all the subnets here. So the more you give, the better the availability would be. So you also need to give a security group so what I'll do is I will just give the security, the default security group. And the default security group has basically all protocol, all ports. So this should suffice. And I'll click on save here. Okay, now there is an issue. It says that the ex uh, the role does not have permission to create a NIC. So what will happen is when I click on save, a uh, network interface will be connected to this particular Lambda. So to do that, I need to give access to the role to make sure that it has access to create a network interface. So again, we need to go back to our permissions and give this particular Lambda's execution role permissions to create a network interface. So I'll cancel this. I will go back to my permission here. I'll open this role. And I'll attach a AWS managed policy. I'll click on attach policy. So the permission to create a network interface interfaces within the EC2 policy. So let's give this particular Lambda uh, Amazon EC2 full access. So there would be permission within this policy to create a network interface. So I click on attach. Let's go back to our configuration. So let's create the VPC again. I'll click on edit. And we'll do the same step again. I'll click on VPC. I'll choose all the subnets. And the default VPC security group. And I'll click on save. So now you can see that that error goes. So let's wait for this particular function to be to be updated. So basically what would so what would actually happen is that this particular lambda would be connected to a network interface that is within this particular VPC and that would give this lambda access to this VPC. So it's a little more complex than that. I, I will give you a link to a YouTube video in the description below. So that would be of much use to you. So let's go back to our console again and let's wait for this to finish. Okay, so it has successfully updated. So let's go back to our code again. And let's run this code once more. So again, this is the private IP address and let's click on test. And you can see that I get a response back. Now that is because this particular Lambda currently is connected to our default VPC. So that was why this particular VPC so that was why this particular Lambda was able to connect to my virtual machine using just the private IP address. So I hope this was a useful lecture. I will see you in the next.